pile of disturbing the peace complaints I gotta look forward to tomorrow. Watch her over squawk on about losing her beauty sleep again. <laughs> We have to get an ordinance against them coming through so late. You're back okay? I noticed during that last hand, it seemed to hurt you just to sit. Well, what hurt was that straight flush of yours. You had that red jack taped under the table, didn't you? Right next to the ace. Seriously. Weren't you gonna go into a county hospital for some kind of tests? What'd they say? They said, don't hang around jackasses who smoke. <laughs> yeah, hell, I've been so pure lately. I think I deserve at least one bad habit. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, Ray. Right? Yeah, all right. You take care now. You all right, Ray? Well, I won't be if I don't get home to the wife soon. Bye, Ethan. See you as soon as I can. Hey, cool. Is everything all right? Yeah, a family friend uh, who's also the chief of police in my hometown is dead. Oh, jeez, I'm sorry. What happened? Well, they're trying to pass it off as a simple car accident, but uh, Ethan seems to think there's more to it. Ethan, isn't that your dad? Yeah. Well, if you need some time off, you know, you can go. Well, I probably will. He, uh, he wants me to look into it for him. I can't remember the last time he asked me to do anything. How long has it been since you've been back? A long time. Hey, guys. I'm almost done with my latest work of genius here. You can take it with you, Cole. Or not. You didn't mess up the car there, did you, Sparky? <laughs> no, the car is fine. It just needs a few minor adjustments. What's giving me a hassle are the connectors for this thing. The keychain alarm? Keychain alarm. <laughs> to the casual observer, yes. But with this little baby, I can control all of the Defender's operations from over 50 yards away. <laughs> nice, huh? Yeah, it works. It'll work. Frankie, how long is it going to take to make these few minor adjustments? 
about 36 hours. But the car's fine, Cole. It just won't morph into the Defender mode right now. All right, well, just forget about it. You can fix it when I get back. You sure? What if something happens? Well, you've obviously never been to Trinity. expect you so soon. Are you all right? It's not like you to take a day off work. Well, I was just on my way to open up. <coughs> bug, I guess. I can't seem to shake it. If you're not feeling well, you should probably be in bed. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm fine. It's supposed to be a ball game. Painted the house, huh? A realtor said it might help. Surprised you're selling it. Why? I don't need so much room anymore. I've just been in the family for so many years. Yeah, well, it's just me now. I stopped by the garage. I saw Ray's truck. Yeah, they had me haul it out of the ditch. But looking it over for anything to, I don't know, help explain what the hell happened. They said he was drunk, huh? That's bull. I was with him all evening. He had maybe one beer. He couldn't have had more to drink after you saw him? He was on his way home. Any problems Ray had in the past, no, he had it under control. Did anybody identify the two guys that you saw Ray arguing with? No, I should have gotten a license number. Everybody acts like I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. You never saw him around town before? Not that I can remember. Look, uh, if you don't want to do this... I'm just asking you some questions. That's what I do when I investigate a case. Is that what this is? Just another case for you? Of course not. I'm just trying to get some information. You should have called. You got your job in Metro. Oh, Ethan, don't do this. Ray Buckner was a friend of mine, too. I'm going to go into town and talk to the new chief. Yeah, well, don't tell him I sent you. He'll throw you out on your ear. See you later.
bartender says you're crazy. You already have six empty bottles in front of you. So he says to this guy, get this, I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. <laughs> Boy, nothing changes here. No way. Tommy Cole. How you doing, How's man? How's it going, buddy? Good. Jeez, how long's it been? Since high school graduation. That's right. The ink wasn't even dry on your diploma. You had to get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah. You come back to fight with your old man? Well, yeah, something like that. Staying out of trouble? Yeah, right. I am Trinity's most illustrious citizen. They're talking about me running for mayor. I'll get out of here. Well, doing most of the talking is Mr. Matt Fontana himself. Right. A political groundswell's got to start someplace. <laughs> you guys know each other? Not if we wait for you to introduce us. I'm Greg Garrison. Tom Cool. Good to meet you. You too. Greg's our new chief. Your, your dad told you about Ray, huh? Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's pretty upset about it. Yeah, these things are always so unexpected. Well, not really. Ray liked his whiskey. But it was a damn shame. I mean, I love that man. So what have you been up to? Been up north a couple years. I just got back. I got a trucking company just outside of town here. Biggest in six counties. Trinity's most notorious delinquent turned successful businessman, huh? Hey. And you, you were, you were the feds I heard. Yeah, still am, working out of Metro. Yeah. So what are you here on some uh, legal deal? No, I just wanted to talk to Chief Garrison for a minute. Well, let me get the hell out of your way. Greg and I were just going over some zoning ordinance for my trucking routes, you know. Good to see you again, Matt. You too, buddy. Listen, before you leave town, let's me and you get together and raise a little hell. Let's huh? do it. All right. Take see you, Greg. Yeah, see you. Coffee? Uh, no thanks. There a federal problem I need to know about, Mr. Cole? Uh, it's local, but I don't even know that there's a problem. I'm just here as a friend of Ray Buckner's. Your dad doesn't think I'm doing my job? No, he didn't say that. I respect the Chief Buckner. He's an excellent lawman. But, uh, he had his problems. Well, I'm familiar with Ray's history. Then you know how he went in and out of sobriety. It happened on Route 3, single car accident, rural, unlit road. He wasn't discovered till morning. What was his blood alcohol level? High. I mean, you'd have to check with County for the exact numbers, but I just know when we pulled him out of the car, it stunk of a brewery, and there was an open bottle of whiskey on the front seat. And you weren't able to find anyone who could corroborate Ethan's story about the two guys in the pickup? No, I mean, it was generalized descriptions your father gave us. Those two men in their pickup could match dozens in this area. Okay, then, uh, well, thanks for your time. My pleasure. Oh, uh, one other thing. Did, uh, Ray write any tickets that night? I wish I could be more help, Mr. Cole, but it... All indications point to a simple case of drunk driving. Thanks. Nice car. Maybe you could take me for a ride sometime. That was the first thing you ever said to me. Except the car was an old beat-up ragtop. Well, I had to say something to get you to notice me. Believe me, I noticed you long before that. Oh, man. How are you, Tom? Good. You look great, Pamela. It's great to see you. You come back to see your dad? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, hey, I heard you were a doctor now, huh? My uncle retired. I'm the Dr. Riggs in charge now. That's great. You want to walk me back to work? Yeah, sure. So is this still the only medical facility in Trinity? Well, we have expanded. I now have an intern, two nurses, and a chiropractor next door. Was Ray Buckner's autopsy performed at the clinic? Well, I'm assuming the family had it done at County General. Why? Well, Ethan doesn't seem to think that Ray was drunk that night. Are you investigating the accident? Well, unofficially. Last I heard, you were working with the government on some special project. It all sounded very mysterious. Well, it is, I guess. You always were good at keeping secrets. So, Ethan missed an appointment he had with me this morning. How's he doing? Why? What are you treating him for? You need to talk to your father, Tom. I'm glad you're here. You stop by later and we'll talk, okay? I'm just fixing myself a sandwich. You want one? No, thanks. I'm not hungry. What'd Garrison say? That's what you told me he'd say. 
newspapers. I ran into Pamela Riggs today. Oh? You know, uh, she never did get married. I understand she's your doctor now. She said you might have something you want to tell me. Well, Pamela's a nice girl, but uh, doctors don't always know what they're talking about. What's going on, Ethan? Nothing. And even if there was something, it'd be my own damn business. Come on, I'm your son. If you're having health problems, I want to know about it. Why? What could you do? Well, I don't know until you tell me what's wrong. I don't want to talk about this. Of course you don't want to talk about it. You never wanted to talk about anything. I'm dying, all right? Is that what you want to hear? It's cancer. Doctors say I got maybe six months. It's an osteosarcoma. It's spread into these areas of your father's hips, into his legs and his arms. It's gone too far for surgery? Well, conservative surgery to reduce the size of the tumor could alleviate some of the symptoms. All right, how much time? It's not good. With chemotherapy, at least there's the possibility of improvement, but Ethan... He's refusing any type of treatment. I'm hoping he'll listen to you. Uh-oh. I'm interrupting something. I'm having a consultation. I know. When Doris told me who it was with, I figured I'd better check it out. Nice, huh? Your old friend glows into town for a couple of days. First thing he does is put the moves on your girl. She's mine, pal. You had your chance. Matt, could you please wait outside? No, it's okay. I have to get going. No, no, I'll go. I'm just joking. I gotta talk to Ethan. Is there something wrong? I'll let Pam tell you. Tommy, Tom, if you need anything, if you need anything, I'm here. Thanks, man. Whoa, is Dad sick, huh? Matt, what are you thinking? This is a medical office. You cannot just barge in here like that. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. And I'd really appreciate it if you'd stop trying to make people think that we're a couple. Uh, you said we needed a cooling off periods. We cooled off. Now I think we should try and make a go of it. I'm not ready. And I don't know if I ever will be. This is the umpteenth time I've been over it. But I feel like Ray's telling me to keep looking. Couldn't these dents have been caused by a car or a truck banging into it? I don't see any scraped pain or discernible residue from another vehicle. Yeah, well, somebody could have rubbed it off. Or it could have happened when Ray rolled it in the ditch. Well, now you sound like Garrison. Dad, Pamela showed me your x-rays. I don't take so many pictures lately. So when were you going to tell me? Or were you going to tell me? When I was ready. Why won't you get the treatment the doctors are recommending? You don't know everything the doctors have told me. Don't you think I took the time to get more than one or two opinions? And you choose to do nothing? I chose to live. Only thing I have control over at this point is what life I have left. None of those treatments offer guarantees. And nothing's showing me they'd be worth it. Which sounds better to you? Six months of non-drugged out semi-quality time? Or six months of puking your guts out from the damn chemo? Dad, when I was growing up, we had our share of differences. But I was always proud to be your son. You taught me to fight for what matters. This matters. Look, I know what I'm doing. Do you? Because it looks like you're giving up. Tom, that's them. That's the truck I saw. Kearns, John Kearns. His partner's last name is Midkip. I've seen him on various job sites around town. They do construction work. This is where you pulled the car out? Yep, right here. As you can see, there are no skid marks leading to it, which pretty much indicates he just drove right off the road. The coroner said Ray broke his neck when the car rolled over. I gotta get back. 
All right, well, thanks for taking the extra time with us. It's my job. Before he got into AA, Ray always kept a flask of whiskey in his glove box. I guess he could have gotten into it after I drove off. He must have been drunk. Else he wouldn't have missed his turn off. Turn off? Access road further back. Cuts over to Route 10, fastest way from town to Ray's house. That's the road. This is the way you usually took? Every evening. scanning device. It picks up elements we can't see. You think a ray could have gone over the side here instead? It's been planted. Those tracks look like they came from two different vehicles, one pushing the other one off the road. What's that look like to you? I'll be damned. Looks like a piece off a taillight. Sure. So they forced Ray off the road here. They could have pulled the car out and moved it to where we found it the next morning. Well, we won't know for sure until I get these pictures back to my partners, but I think this is the original crash site. I always taught you to pay attention to details. I guess all those hours I had you boring out cylinders and polishing hubcaps finally paid off, huh? You taught me everything I know. This joke is a problem. <laughs> so, Cole, we got a match. The first set of tire tracks at the new crash site matched Chief Buckner's car. Looks like the same thing in the taillight cover. Now, the second set of tracks match the model and brand of the suspect's vehicle. Should be enough for a warrant, but to really nail it, we need to get a tire print off of that pickup. Well, no one in town seems to know where they live or work. What were their names again? John Kearns, 35. Heavy set, sandy hair, dark eyes. His partner, last name Midkiff, early to mid 30s. Dark hair. Looks like he spends a lot of time in the gym. Okay, I'm on it. All right, I'll get back to you. Yeah, at least Mark's under here puzzled me at first. Now they make perfect sense. Before I hauled it up that morning, this is where another towing hook locked on to move the car to where we found it. Damn. I'm sorry, Ethan. I should have followed up on your earlier suspicions. I just didn't expect to cover up. Here's the results to those tire tracks and some other evidence from the crime scene. How'd you get this so fast? Don't tell me. You've got a forensics lab in that fancy sports car of yours. Among other things. You'd be surprised what this kid can do. Hell, by the time he was 12, he could drive almost as good as me. Dad, by then I was better than you. <laughs> hey, Tommy. I was coming out to see you. I heard Ray's death may not have been so accidental. Yeah, well, do you know Midkiff or Kearns? They worked for me. They were doing construction on my house. They were bad news. They ripped me off, so I fired them. You know where they're at now? Well, they were at that trader corps just outside of town, but I heard they split. How about you and me? Go find these guys and kick some murdering ass. Matt, I don't want you getting involved in this. I want to help out. You know. Cole, Fontana, unbeatable like the old days? Well, these aren't the old days, and uh, I don't want anyone getting hurt, so... You think you're the only one that stayed in shape? You, you think I can't take care of myself? Matt, I'm a cop. I'm just doing my job. I'm just joking. Joking. I'll keep my eyes, my ears open, I'll let you know what I see. Well, I'd appreciate that. One other thing. Man to man. Are you seeing Pamela again? Matt, she's my dad's doctor. Well, come on, I thought you guys were a couple. We are. We are. We're just going through a patch right now. Once all this is cleared up, I'm going to marry her. <laughs> That's great, Matt. I wish you the best of luck. This is his poker night, but uh, is there something wrong? No, I just wanted to drop off a prescription he left. Come mm. on in. 
You know, no matter how much your dad tries to ignore his illness, eventually he's gonna need that. Oh my God, where did you find these? God, I was such a geek. No, you were the prom queen. <laughs> oh, look at your dad. Wow, he was a good-looking man. Yeah, all the ladies thought so, too. Right after that shot was taken in Daytona, the uh, bikini dragged him off to Vegas for three fun-filled weeks. I think he thought it was part of the prize winnings. I remember how tough it was when your folks divorced and your mom had her heart attack. Well, the toughest part was that uh, Ethan never took responsibility for any of it. Still hasn't. I wish you could have talked to me about how you were feeling then. Maybe I could have helped. Couldn't talk to anyone back then. It wasn't fair what happened to you. The way I just left like that. You could have at least said goodbye, kiddo. Thought it was something I did. It's okay. It was a long time ago. I ran into Matt today. Oh no, what did he tell you? How much in love we are? You're definitely getting married. <laughs> I started dating Matt when he first moved back to Trinity. I mean, there aren't that many men I go out with in this town, so... I thought we were just having fun. Then Matt started getting serious, and what a mistake. Yeah, Matt's persistent, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> you know it's all your fault, but... I mean, you spoiled it for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's because you were my first love, but... Even after all these years. I should go. Another late night convoy to wake up everyone in Trinity. What's he hauling? Mom's tires, this, that, I don't know. He didn't talk about his business much except to brag about how much money he was making. So Kearns and Midkiff were cellmates in Duelmont, both parolees with long police records, including burglary, strong arm mob stuff. Well, did their parole officers register any legitimate work? Construction, truck driving. They were fired or quit from over eight companies all around the country. Cole, are you there? Uh, yeah, uh, listen, do me a favor. See what you can dig up on a company called Matt Fontana Trucking. Yeah, sure. You think they work there? Well, Fontana told me that he hired him to do some construction work for him, but, uh, I don't know. I've got a hunch that they're somehow more connected to his trucking operation. All right. I just talked to Ray's wife. She's agreed to have the body exhumed for a post-mortem. She said it was Garrison's idea not to do an autopsy. Garrison? Yeah our new police chief. Can we really keep the exhumation and the autopsy confidential? Well, we're gonna try. with it. My mechanic will be here any minute. Nobody's a better mechanic than me. Well, this involves a bunch of computers and stuff, so I've worked on cars with computers. Not like this one. I thought your friend left Metro a long time ago. What, did he get lost or what? Uh, he doesn't get out much. Pamela gonna be okay? I, I was just gonna take a walk down and see how she's doing. So this is Trinity, huh? <laughs> hey, remind me to turn my watch back to 1969. How come none of the roads here have street signs on them? I mean, what's a person supposed to do? What, do you turn at the third column on the left? <laughs> this is your race mechanic? Uh, he's got a better sense of direction when he's under the hood. Yeah, I'm sort of a developmental engineer. You know, uh, 
An automotive futurist, if you will. Oh, an automotive futurist. I never met one of them. Ethan Cole. Frankie Waters, nice to meet you. Hey, I'm a big fan of yours. I've followed your racing career since I was a kid. Eight stock car championships. Uh, Frankie, as soon as possible. I'll be right back. Okay, let's see what we got here. Are you sure you're okay? You sure? Yeah. You need anything, anything. You page me, I'll come running, okay? Okay? Tom, are you here to talk to Dr. Riggs about your daddy again? Matt, please. Yeah, okay, Pam. I know you got your patients to take care of. There. You lied to me, buddy. I didn't think you'd do that to a friend. What are you talking about, Matt? You said you weren't going to try and snake my girl. And then I find out she was riding around in your car when those maniacs were shooting at you. Matt, you're paranoid. What are you, nuts? She could have been killed. You must have known those psychos were looking for you. I didn't, and I was looking for them. The point is, she shouldn't even have been with you. She's with me now. Really? Have you asked her how she feels about that? I think I know a little bit more about how she feels than you do. I have been here for her, man. I didn't dump her and run when I couldn't handle a few little hassles with my papa. Get out of my face before I lose my temper. We've been friends a long time. And I hate like hell that we're fighting like this. But I swear, if you can't stay away from her, you've been warned. You OK? You go out with someone, you think you know them. They do crazy and immature things you laugh about as kids. After you grow up, they're not so funny anymore. What did he say to you? It's what I saw. Those men who attacked us today, I recognize them. They worked with Matt. Well, I know. He said he hired him to do some construction work. No, they work with him at the trucking company. They're like his main guys. I just saw them there yesterday. Does Matt know that you saw them today? No. No, I told him that the attack happened so fast. I was in shock. I didn't see anything. Have you heard from the federal forensics team yet? Yeah, they exhumed the body. They're just getting started on the postmortem. Hey, Matt, look, I'm sorry. We... <laughs> Matt, stop it! Stop it! We didn't know your girlfriend was in the car with them, all right? We didn't know it! Are you were... blind? You were following them! You didn't see her! We were in the middle of an ambush. We you shut know... up! Let it go! We got to think here. If we don't do something before Cole goes to the feds with this thing, we're all going down. When we get back from our trip upstate, we're going to finish it. And this time, I want Cole dead. There's no record of contracts between Matt Fontana Trucking and any other shipping company. But I did find out something interesting about the owner. It seems Fontana served time at Dual Mod around the same times as Kearns and Midkiff. Matt? For what? Hijacking trucks. But get this. One of the state troopers that was there when Fontana got busted was Trinity's new chief of police, Garrison. All right, that's good work. I'll get back to you. I know it had to be done, but just doesn't seem right digging Ray up and cutting on him like that. Well, we've got to do the autopsy to find out what happened to him. <sighs> yeah, but still, he's my best friend. I haven't been hit this hard by anything since... Since what, Dad? Since your mom passed away. I don't look so surprised. In spite of everything, I never stopped loving her. Tom. Tom, they dispatched you this. Brain tissue distillation and intestinal absorption tests indicate that Chief Buckner had less than 0 0.01 blood alcohol content. What did I tell you? And the most significant finding is his broken neck is inconsistent with the type of fracture they described in the accident report. You mean someone broke it for him? It's possible. A man's hands could have twisted it to cause this type of fracture. You think Matt had something to do with the murder? I think Ray was somehow in the way of whatever scam Matt and Garrison are running out of the trucking company. Are you going to arrest them? I don't have enough to tie Matt into it yet. I sure would like to get a look into his office, though. I may be able to help.
password is Pamela. Yeah, Gene. We're on our way back. Any messages? Nothing important. Your girlfriend's here dropping off some things in your office. What things? Listen, take a good look at the security monitors and tell me exactly what you see. I found some financial records, but I don't know what this means. New York, Miami, Chicago, Seattle. I mean, they're small town bad boys made it to the big time. Looks like Matt's running a major hijacking operation. Hijacking trucks? Yeah, loaded with merchandise. Crews from around the country take them down and bring them here to be fenced. You want me to make a copy of this? Yeah, let's get the hell out of here. putting it back together now. Well, hurry up. Things are starting to heat up. Pat? Come on out, baby. I don't blame you for any of this. I still love you. Once I get this thing with Tom squared out, you and me, we can go anywhere in the world we want to go. Nobody else can give you what I can give you. Your choice. Fine. If that's the way you want it. To hell with you! This is all your fault, Cole! How's that, man? I had it all, and you got jealous. I had the best looking girl, the biggest house on the hill, my dream since high school. And you screwed it up. Come on, Matt. You didn't get your dream. None of this is real. You took the easy way out, just like you always did. You know me. Quick as move to the end zone. It's what I do. Gene. Sorry, Matt. Gene's taking a little nap. Maybe I can go get it. You stay put. I gotta get something to stop this bleeding.
Get your partner to shut that, that thing off and come on out! I'd hate to do it, but I'll kill her if I have to. Lose the gun, buddy. Good boy. Now, go get the keys and bring them to me. Give me the keys, Frankie. Be careful, man. I just overhauled it, and it's, uh, it's all tricked out. Hey, old pal. Remember I used to shoot at a street lamp after we won a game? It's lights out, man. Don't even think about it. How you doing? I ain't giving up yet. Looks like you still need me around. No, no, don't wake him. Just let him know I called and tell him I'll see him this weekend. All right, thanks, Mary. Your sister? Yeah, yeah, she's staying with Dad this week, and on Friday I'm gonna drive out and take my turn for a few days. How's he doing? Pretty good. You know, he's not crazy about the treatment, but he's got a pretty good attitude about things. Well, we're gonna head out. You ready to go? No, I'm gonna hang out for a bit, but uh, you guys go ahead, and I'll see you in the morning. All right. Okay. Okay. Okay.